After writing dozens of books, serving in Congress for three decades, and running for President of the United States three times, Ron Paul has entered the realm of the World Wide Web. This summer, the former Texas congressman started the Ron Paul Channel, otherwise known as the next chapter of the Ron Paul Revolution. Last week, Paul sat down with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to discuss U.S. military action in Syria and exactly what Julian Assange thinks might be behind it. Haven't you touched on this subject of somebody looking for an incident, uh, you know, with Syria that would justify, you know, all the countries to come in and a United States government to come in, a British government to come in and do something in Syria? Uh, was there something along that line that you had uh, discovered? Uh, that, that's right. They really felt that what they needed uh, was uh, for there to be some uh, humanitarian outrage. Uh, in Syria, and uh, that once they had that, uh, that would legitimize uh, going in uh, with a big airstrike. These countries never really gave a damn about Syrians before. Joining us now is former congressman from Texas and host of the Ron Paul channel, Dr. Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, thanks so much for joining us and congratulations on the new endeavor. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you. Nice to be with you as well. I want to first ask you about the interview with Julian Assange and his contention that somehow the U.S. actually wanted this war, wanted a reason to go into Syria. What do you think of that? Well, I have to believe him. I think he's uh, probably getting it from the documents that he studied very thoroughly. Uh, and I, I think, you know, one thing that's interesting, what his predictions were, you know, if something happened, then they could justify that to go in and expand the war in Syria. But, you know, it's, it's not like uh, 10 years ago where you could bring up something and you could have, have these comments made and everybody would join and the U.N. would join and NATO would join and the world would join in the war. Today, it's a different world. Even though they have the incident, they might have been hoping for something, but now they have this gas, uh, so-called uh, gas deaths of the people, and they're accusing Assad of all this, of all the killing, and, and the rebels haven't caused any trouble. But the world hasn't rallied that way. So I think it's a different world. But I think it's a very significant event of what he was talking I, about. I have to ask you, do you really think President Obama is looking for a reason to go to war in Syria? I mean, this is a president who has been very public with his skepticism about war. He took, the, he took an unprecedented action, which was to curb executive power and involve Congress in the, the decision-making around military intervention. What did you think of that move uh, last well, Saturday? Oh, I thought it was pretty interesting. He was yielding to pressure. He was yielding to the vote, you know, uh, in the British Parliament. But I think there's some uh, reason to say that he personally might, you know, not like this. But I think the pressure comes from the people around him, the people who are always around all the presidents, all the leaders of the Republicans, all the leaders of the Democrats. They all gather together. So he's getting that pressure, and it might be contradicting some of his self-instincts. But just look at how the leaders of both parties have lined up. They're, they're just thinking this is, this is it. We have to stick together. But do you think but that, I, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Paul, but do you really think that everyone's lining up to go in? I mean, the wisdom right now is that it's anybody's guess what Congress is uh, going to do in terms of the authorization. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm talking about lining up the leadership. Did you see the leadership of the House and the leadership of the Senate, Republican and Democrat? It's the same way when we wanted to curtail NSA. The leadership, you know, finally uh, kept the power for the NSA, but the grassroots, the coalition is building. I think there's a historic event going on here, and if this vote is, is uh, one, that is, defeat the request to have uh, more military approach to uh, Syria. I think it'd be historic because it'll be a grand coalition of the libertarian Republicans and the Democratic progressives. Everybody's worried about the split in the Democrats and the split in the Republicans. I'm delighted with that split because it's pushing people together who are on opposite ends of the spectrum, one which I enjoy. Get, sure. Get the progressives to come together with the libertarian Republicans and the constitutionalists and oppose these right, wars but, and I mean, protect civil Dr. liberties. Dr. Paul, you, you have to admit that they wouldn't have a chance to make their voices heard had they not been given the opportunity by President Obama, which is to say if, if he had not gone to Congress with this, 
they ne they wouldn't have had a chance to vote. And yeah, I, yeah, I guess yeah, I yeah, ask you, are you not? Do you not applaud the president for making that decision? No, no this is this is pure p political. I mean, he still says he doesn't need the authority. All our presidents say we don't need authority. But if there's a public pressure to say, oh, let's give the Congress a say. In the past, they give the Congress a say, and like we're very important, and then they condone everything. We always condone essentially of anything the presidents want to do. But today is different. That today is different. The people are tired of this. The world's tired of it. The British are tired of it. When you think of British ally, when you think of how, how they were behind us on every bomb we ever dropped in the last 15 years or 20 years, all of a sudden they're breaking ranks. I think, I think this is, but to come to the Congress, it's not for constitutional reasons. I could have done that six months ago or, or whenever, but he's coming under pressure and maybe for political reasons. All right. Uh, We'll make the Congress says, why are you doing this without our permission? Let Congress give them the permission, and then they can all share the blame. Well, I mean, so there's Dr. a lot Paul, of politics going on. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I, I guess we just be, I'm, we'll have to agree to differ on this point, because I do think the president, it seems that the president made that decision totally on his own last weekend and without the support of even his closest advisors. But we'll move on to another subject, and I, and I do want to talk about the Ron Paul channel a little bit. I know you just interviewed uh, your son, Rand Paul, and he also has taken a pretty strong strand, stance on intervention. I wonder what is your uh, consultation with Rand Paul like in terms of foreign policy these days? Do you speak to him on the phone regularly? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, uh, he goes his way and I go my way because we're pretty independent minded. But he obviously has views very similar to mine and he has, you know, spoken out pretty strongly against this war. So I haven't sensed that uh, he has much of a different position. Um, can I ask about uh, Julian Assange was obviously one of your other guests and you guys spoke about the uh, surveillance state, something that you've been warning against for decades now. Um, in terms of surveillance, uh, how confident are you that we are seeing the end of what has been termed the American empire in terms of a broad overreach and monitoring of American citizens? Well, we haven't seen the end of it. Uh, tyrants and, uh, uh, you know, empires cling desperately and their best weapon is lying. Uh, you know, if, if they can lie and take away the privacy of the individuals and spy on the people, they're very, very powerful. But the people are waking up. I'm encouraged by it. I was very encouraged by the Justin Amash vote, uh, that coalition again of libertarians and uh, progressive Democrats coming together. So, but we have a long way to go. We are threatened. And I think our biggest threat is from the uh, tyrants in Washington who would not protect our liberties. They destroy our First Amendment. They, and they threaten people. Whistleblowers become, uh, uh, you know, criminals and they're charged with treason. So, yes, we have a long way to go, but I still think that the whole purpose is truth and openness. We need more openness in government. We need more privacy with the people, and we need to just come home and not have this conspiracy of our government to run all these wars and all these... All all the wars have been based on lies. We haven't proven any lies yet from this administration. They claim they're not going to make the mistake that Bush made about the lies. But believe me, there's going to be found many, many deceptions. And the biggest deception is that but we need to be there for national security. You're saying that there are going to be many deceptions found, but you just admitted before that, that we haven't seen any lies from this administration. Don't you think that's sort of irresponsible? Well, I, I think you need to repeat that again because I, I missed a little bit of that. Say that again, please. Uh, you contended that we haven't seen lies from this administration, but then went on to say we are sure to see deceptions come from this administration. Until you have seen deceptions or have evidence of lies, is it not irresponsible to sort of stoke the flames of distrust for this government? Well, I'm going by history, and I, I didn't get to finish that sentence before when I was, uh, was I, I was answering that, because the real deception, the grand deception, is that we're doing this for national security. That is so bizarre. And at the same time, we do that, we fight these wars, we bankrupt our countries, we make more enemies, and we ignore the fact that we use drones to kill kids, and then we're going in there because some gas passed, and 100,000 people were killed, and they say, oh, Assad killed 
killed them all. It just this today I saw this horrendous picture of the rebels, you know, murdering in cold blood, you know, some of the, the Syrians that they had captured. So, yes, there's a lot of deception going on. And uh, the whole and this gives them license at the same time. Our greatest threat is are our liberties here at home, our First Amendment yeah. rights, our Fourth Amendment rights. That is where the real concern is. And we're supposed to be, you know, concentrating on invading another country. And quite frankly, if they were honest with us, some are, some of the neocons are more honest uh, with us on this. And it's the march to uh, Tehran. It's know, a, it's, this is all to do with getting Iran uh, and taking that country over. And we've been doing that since 1953. Dr. Paul, and then you, people do, ask you, why do they dislike us? Yeah. Dr. Paul, you talk a lot about liberty and uh, broad coalitions. And I think one of the, you know, one of the, the most hopeful signs for the GOP is the broad coalition that you were able to put together in the last presidential race. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, uh, which is really an outlier within the, the current state of uh, the Republican Party. But with your emphasis on liberty, I have to ask you about some of the folks that are in your coalition. And this weekend, you're going to be giving an address at, uh, at the Fatima Center, uh, at the, at a conference in Canada for the Fatima Center, which has been called a hardcore anti-Semite group. Is this something that you would reconsider doing? No. Even Is it Catholic? Just, go ahead. It's a, I, I even talk to Republicans, and they disagree with everything I say. <laughs> you know, when I'm on a Republican stage and I say we should have a foreign policy of the golden rule, they boo me. I'm trying to convert people. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to a conservative Catholic group that is pro-peace and want to hear my foreign policy and my take on economy. If I go only, I wouldn't be on this station if I had to have a litmus test. I mean, you well, have an but, opinion. Uh, disagree this, with this mine. Station, so I'm Dr. on your Paul, station. This station. Why can't right. I go there? And we we to, really we appreciate you, yes, and we appreciate you coming on this station. But at the same time, this station is not advocating, as the Fatima Center has, to the duty incumbent upon Catholics of combat, combating valiantly for the integral okay, rights of Christ the King and opposing. Jewish naturalism and preaching about Satan's plans against the church, among which include the granting of full citizenship to the Jews. Is your appearance at an at an event like this not some kind okay. of endorsement of? Okay, what I would say is yes. There are disagreements within the Catholic Church, and they're debating. It's theological. I have nothing to do with that. I, I'm not even going to pretend I know anything about that. Sounds to me like you have me on here to bash Catholics. I'm I, have, I was Catholic raised basher. Catholic, so that's the last thing I want to do. Yeah, well, you ought to be more courteous to them and give them a break. I mean, you know, why can't we have discussions with people that might have a difference? And I put up with a lot of this in the last 40 years because not too many people agree. But why I'm excited is the country is coming toward the way of peace and this coalition of libertarians and progressives. We've had too much war, too much spending, too much Federal Reserve printing of money. And that's what's important for you to bring this stuff up about the infractions of some group that I have no idea what their theology is all about. I don't even have any idea why you do things like that. Well, that's because just, Dr. That's just Paul, astounds you know, me. Um, you know, there have been act, there have been a lot of folks that have been involved with your campaign supporters. There have been newsletters that have been accredited to you that have strong anti-Semitic uh, racist undertones. And I think the American public is curious about how you endorse or do not endorse or, or deny involvement with any of that. And that, that's why it's a relevant line of questioning. At the well, same time... It, it, so uh, I've had that, you know, the first month after I was elected in 1976, I had a picture in a magazine. Here I was practicing position for all those years, and I run for office. I had no expectation of winning. I win. I'm totally innocent. The first month, they put my picture in a magazine with a swastika. So this is just horrible. It just goes on. When people disagree with you on ideas, they have to destroy your character. That's what they do. The main reason I get attacked from every, anybody like you, it's because there's disagreement on my foreign policy. I want peace and I don't want to support the warmongers. So you have to go after somebody's character. I don't think, I think that that wrong. constitutes a character attack, Dr. Paul, but we really do appreciate you coming on the show and talking about the yeah. ideas that are, that are dear to you and, and your hope for the country. Thanks for your time, you had, former you congressman. Had your you had your chance. I hope I had my chance for my answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Ron Paul, host of the Ron Paul Channel. Thanks for your time.